Hello, Reckoning7, and welcome back to Combat Mission Cold War in this play-by-play head-to-head match. Um, now, obviously, the screen in front of you does not reflect the match as we are playing, and that's because I want to take a very slight interlude before we uh, watch the replay to talk about the forces my opponent has brought with them. So, so we don't reference this point, number of tank forces, BMPs, infantry, uh, Shilka, some recalls, rifles, but I haven't really gone into detail around which particular Soviet tank he's brought and how uh, you can work that out. Um, so there is probably the easiest way or I found in terms of differentiating between the generations of Soviet tanks, so from the 55 to 64 to the T-72 to the T-80, is actually by their wheels. So if I have a look here on the T-55 here, they're probably the easiest to spot as they only have five of these road wheels on their tracks. I'm sure there's many other giveaways as well, they are a slightly different shape, but if we're looking at wheels alone, that's well, five of them, it's a T-55, the 64, 72 and 80 all have six. So if we move up a generation to the T-64s, um, and this, the, the easiest way to really tell them apart is by almost what the wheels look like. Uh, and so I've given them some uh, some names which probably do them very serious technical disservice. Um, but in terms of 64, essentially have these kind of dimple effect around the edge, and you see it's prevalent in both the 64A and the 64B. As we move to the T-72s, because that's what I call uh, hubcaps, so that's essentially what it reminds me of. Um, I see that's prevalent throughout the variants of the T-72s. Uh, there. And then when we move on to the T-80s, you've got this kind of, uh, almost like a rivet, so a kind of small divot in at the centre. That's there on the T-80 and on the T-80B. Uh, so like I said, there are other differences between the various tanks, things like side skirts, um, also machine gun mounts, all different pieces. But at a glance, that's um, probably my go-to at the minute. Uh, obviously it can be undone if people are if you're using different mods and skins and stuff, but for the ones I'm using, that's how I tell them apart. So back to the match in question, and I, we will end this with a view of my opponent's tank. But uh, I can tell he is using T-64s, for the apart from the wheels. Uh, and then so to differentiate between the A and the B, again, the easiest way to do it is still look at the tracks, is the side skirts. So the T-64Bs have got side skirts on them and the A's do not. And obviously there's a number of differences between the tank as well in terms of it. The Bs can fire 80 GMs, they've got slightly better fire control, slightly better armour. Um, which is all the all the kind of information you want to know once you've identified what you're up against. But for our little Stramash, we are fighting T-64, well, A's primarily, I've certainly not investigated all those times. Okay, without further ado, let's jump back over then to our own battlefield. Okay, here we are, and as you can see, as I was talking about, uh, so six road wheels, so I know it's not a 55, and it's got these dimples around the outside. As you can see, it is a T-64A. You can also tell the A and B apart from a number of um, these large cylinders they have in the back, but the A's only having one and the B's having two. But I'm sticking with wheels for my differentiate at the minute, so there we go. And also, I was having a look around, the other tank we spot in the middle there is another 64A, but actually out here on the far flank, we've got as seen by the side skirts, T-64B, so it's slightly more capable, also has 80 GM, so something to be a little bit more aware of as an a opponent. Alright, so um, I still think in terms of force size, this is probably it in terms of his forces, kind of uh, ta uh, tank HQ platoon, I think is his, his overarching formation, with one, so have a, a, an HQ and probably a second in command tank. One platoon of four T-64As, and then one platoon of mechanized infantry. And, a th and a, with some accoutrement in terms of a Shilka and a recoilless uh, rifle and maybe some other things. But that's, I think, everything that we are up against. I don't think he has any other kind of forces surprising us on the flank. I have not, I must admit, gone in and looked at the points cost for all of these to see exactly how accurate it is, and maybe I'll do that at the start of, uh, of the next video. Probably things I should have done after a few minutes of contact, but I don't get too too worked up on playing perfectly. 
Okay, so let's, uh, I'm almost five minutes in, I haven't even pressed the play button. Where are we? What's going on? Well, we have got two Dragon missiles in the air. If you can remember, we've got one just here, which you may or may not be able to see, which has been launched at this T-64B. And we've got one here, which has been launched at this BMP. I suspect the BMP will be a hit and a kill. I suspect the one aimed at the T-64B will hit a tree. Uh, but we shall wait and see. And we're continuing to smack the edges of Zemdom with mortar fire. Oh, let there go. It's one hit. Oh, okay. We'll go back and look at that. So we hit the turret. But as we've seen in a number of these cases, the uh, missile's not enough to get the job done. Which is surprising. Well, it's less surprising now. I was surprised the first time it happened. Now it's just something I'm aware of. Our spotters are still getting hammered here by the T-64 up in this tree line. Even though we have given them a command to hide, but I guess they are not... Not squirreling down to the ground quite enough. I am pleased with the general carnage we're inflicting on Zemdom. No, I don't. Oh, we fired another one. Oh, and we got penetration. Right, well, we'll go back and we'll look at that. I hit over this tank. This has been a very good minute. Although we've not taken this uh, chap out. Oh, and we got another penetration. Oh my word, this has been a turn and a half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at the carnage. That's beautiful. <laughs> ah, brilliant. And in amongst it all... Is, is that... A, well, I could be wrong with the number of tanks he has here then. Because there may be... Three tanks in here. Four, five, six... Be a seventh. Unless platoons come in fives and fours, that could be a mistake on my part. I do. Uh, I do. Sometimes you get confused flitting between the various games. Okay, let's go back. Let's have a look at what happened to our dear friend here, the T seventy two. So right at the start of the minute, we've got the um, missile coming in from our dragon team. So this is this is our. Um, mortar actually uh, kind of team that weren't really doing much so we grabbed a, a dragon off one of our HQ vehicles and set him up on a hill to see what adventures he get into and I'm just, I can't believe he threaded that needle actually that's uh, pretty good but hits the turret no damage well eh, no that's even say damage no penetration might de degrade some which in our system what I'm interested in is where that second shot comes from whether it's these guys without someone else. I'll show you the range even of the uh, man portable ATGM, even the Cold Warrior. He is aiming, he might be able to have another go. He is having another go. Well, that's quite a good uh, rate of fire there. We get a lower front hull penetration. Beautiful. That was a good shot. And that is one knocked out tank. Excellent. Really, really pleased with that. So since we are close to the end, I believe it happened right at the tail end. Was it this? Yeah. Ha! From our dragon team hiding in the bushes. Yeah, you can just see the little red start to appear. That's another good hit. Oh, I'm really happy with these. Uh, the way these dragon teams have been performing. That's excellent. That's excellent. So that was a BMP and two uh, tanks were taking this turn, which is funny because we're having such ish difficulties in taking out these guys. So far, uh, if you can remember, this guy has taken um, one missile, one tow missile on his turret, two, two dragons using a tree in front of him. It seemed uh, frustratingly difficult to kill. And it looks like that's another missile from our tow launcher here. Which thankfully has a reasonable number left. But yeah, upper, upper front hull doesn't penetrate. Genuinely quite surprised. Ah, 
And we did get a spot of another tank nestled in here. Okay. Cool. That is going to have been... So if it's three in there, four, five, six, seven tanks in total spotted. Okay. Ah, this guy's just proving... Frustrating and difficult to kill, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy how much we've eroded the forces here. You are not kind of being flagged as it out. Oh, because I'm at 10 seconds on the arm jet. <laughs> I'm going to hit myself, which will give some relief to our poor, beleaguered spotting team. So we are going to have to... Yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do to dig out the, the tanks in here. We've got some obviously close range guys with laws and stuff. We'll see how we go. I don't really need to dig them out aggressively. I'm probably happy to put in some ambushes. Now that we have really knocked a hole in the supporting elements up on this ridge line, I'm even more excited about getting our friend here, the tow, and our friend here, the scout, and trying to push them around the flank to condensed where we can kind of come in behind this positioning start to get a bit of a view not the greatest actually we can get a bit of a view up onto the side I mean okay this tank's dead now but we can it just open up another angle where we might be able to engage bits and pieces of the force excellent I'm annoyed we haven't killed that tank but so far so good uh, let's quick check on our dragon teams here. So you still have... You've got two missiles left. I approve of that. I'm probably going to have to reposition where you are. Because you aren't really seeing anything. And I'm not sure you will see anything. That might be a good target for you to engage and take care of, though. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, okay, I've done 11 minutes, so let's not do it too long. But I will have you... Pop yourselves here, and that should give you line of sight into the town. I appreciate it's pretty smoky. And then we have another dragon team with no dragon ammo left, because he used all three rounds actually up against that vehicle, I remember now. You guys I'm going to pull back, because you keep getting shot at, although this tank's out of action. So, no, just here we are. And this tow vehicle's running away. <laughs> just worried about an invincible tank. So what we could do. What rounds have we got left? Uh, oh, not much actually. We used up all my 107mm mortars, sm smackings in them. I'd be interested to see if we've done any damage to those tanks. What I would like is this team now it is armed with a reasonable number of laws, well, two of them. I wonder if we could uh, eventually and flank one of these tanks close range. Let's see. First start, we'll get you guys here. I'm going to give you a hide command until you get there, and we'll evaluate what's going on. Everything else, I'm pretty happy with. This dragon team has done a phenomenal job. This dragon team hasn't done much actually. Potentially, we could push him out to this little corner and get some flanking shots on our tanks over here. In terms of vehicles, we know they've got less. Not many, actually. So we know we've got these two tanks, this Shilka, and just the tanks in there. Okay. I feel like we're, we're on the edge here. Right. So I'm going to tweak some moves. I'm going to go and continue movement orders for this tour for the scout to head them over around to the flank of Denstet. 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 I can't speak. I also think I'm going to move out some of my infantry from these positions and push up and take a position in this wood. I'm going to take uh, probably the rest of second squad here, mount them up, push them into this wood, dismounted, so that they can provide a screen for my dragon team to get in a position to try and flank these guys. And while they're doing that, we'll push an even wider flank round with our tow and our M113 with the scout in it. And I'm pretty happy with that. Excellent. Okay, that was uh, longer than it should have been, but we'll leave it there. As ever, I'm interested to hear your thoughts and queries, etc. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheerio!